Living Free Mike deals with some hate. And we get an update from Felix. This is Wednesday. Hello. What's up, blind viewers? How is everybody doing today? All right. We're going to start this one off with Felix. That's right. Felix gave us a little update and uh, tells us all about what's been going on with his little world. Now, Big Dog Felix, he uh, talks about treatment in hopes of a procedure. I know that uh, chemo is, uh, I'm going to get aggressive chemo. They need to try to shrink the mass so I will be if it shrinks enough and then I'll be eligible for a they call it a Whipple procedure which they go in and open you up. basically yeah the Whipple that's uh they 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 replumb you basically they uh <laughs> yeah they just go in and, and detach some things and retach some things in other places but yeah so that's what the the hope is uh they can do the aggressive chemo, which will shrink it enough where they can go in and do this Whipple procedure. And uh, Felix talks about uh, medical coverage uh, or, or the lack thereof and working on getting some coverage. Uh, he's waiting on an answer about that right now. Now, he did say a nurse has been checking in on him. Uh, she says that there are programs that will help if insurance falls through. Now, Felix understands his prognosis, and he uh, seems to have come to terms with it. I, you know, I have pancreatic, pancreatic cancer stage four, so that's like a 9.8 survival. Uh, with that Whipple procedure, I might buy some time, five, six, seven, eight years, four years, five years, but mostly five. And people do last a little longer than that, which is okay with me. Um, mental. So yeah, he says he is uh, mentally strong, and he is he's dealing with it. He's dealing with it. So uh, from from what he's showing, he seems to be dealing with it and handle it pretty well. But uh, uh, let's face it, no one really knows what goes on when the cameras are off. And I'm not saying that he's uh, you know trying to pull our leg or anything but hopefully he is dealing with it like he said he is i do think that uh being there when kevin went through his ordeal you know it, it helps a lot seeing that kevin uh came out the other side can bring some optimism and hope now i wish felix all the best and uh hope all goes well i really do i'm sure he has a, a support group and no matter what the size it does make a difference so uh stay strong there big dog All right, moving right along. Living Free Mike. He's dealing with some hate. Well, I guess not some. I guess he's dealing with a lot of hate. All right, guys. I, I got a lot of hate on that video. Uh, hail and hate. Obviously, I knew it was coming. I didn't think it would be to such a high volume. <laughs> and... <laughs> I don't know what uh, video he's referring to, and uh, I didn't see it anywhere. And to be totally honest, I didn't look real hard either. <laughs> I don't even know if it's still up, to be honest. Anyway, Mike goes on to explain his angst about the situation. You know how it works is one hateful person will say something as if it's fact Four other people will read that comment and it already aligns with what they want to believe because they're feeling down themselves. And it's so, snowballed, Mike. So they'll read it and they'll <laughs> give it a thumbs up and comment on it. And it becomes that comment becomes popular because people seem drawn to negative. That's right. We all know. We all know, right? Right? And that's the point. As a YouTuber, 
and especially one that has been doing it as long as Mike, you should expect this behavior. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it happens all the time. I know you'd like to think you're special, but over the years, I, I've heard callous tubers talk about the hate and the lies, and we all know how people can be. Now, unfortunately, it is just a part of the internet. See, I told you it was a weapon. There are those with nothing to do and all day to do it. They will watch your videos just to scour the background to pick shit apart. They will hang on every word in hopes you'll fuck up. It doesn't make it right, but it comes with the territory. And I would think that Mike would know this by now. Mike then goes on to address what makes a successful YouTuber. I'll give you guys a secret. I've met a lot of YouTubers over the years. And I'll tell you that some of the fakest people I've ever met have have the most success. That's just Yeah. So the fake ones have more success. This is yet another thing that most people should know by now. I mean, come on. What makes better content? A happy, smiley person singing the praises of the euphoric, free, cheap, and easy life? Or someone going through it, you know, and telling the truth? Everyone wants to hear that the thing that they are doing is the greatest thing ever. And just ask to Bob. He made a fortune off of it. What is a bigger draw? A person sitting in their home or apartment? Or a person living full time <laughs> in a car, bus, van, or RV? Everyone thinks they are a star. They play the role of TV personality from days gone by. They present only the best version of themselves. They play the modern reality star. They put themselves in fake and what they think interesting situations in order to stay relevant, get views, and make money. When numbers slip a bit, create a crisis. There's nothing like some good old-fashioned drama. Now, this is always good for some troll views and sympathy donations. Now, some people fall for it while others see through it, but watch for the chuckles of it all. Mike then talks about people asking for money, and he explains the constructs of business. If you make content and people learn something or are just entertained, you are owed something. There are people out there doing absolutely nothing and getting on social media and stuff like that. And they're like, gimme, 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 right? <laughs> yeah, I get it. I want to speak from the other side for one minute. When you've devoted almost 10 years of your of your life sharing your life um that comes with labor right and youtube is a business the simple fact is the construct of a business is when you um labor we we all know what it is for some and then you want something you want something right that's what i said the first I had to say is, I remember someone, who could it be, that only did live streams when they needed money. They even went as far as to say something like, uh, what was it, something along the lines like, uh, I'm not getting off here until I get $500. Woo, got $500, let us make it 1000 Oh, yeah, yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, we remember that guy, don't we? Now, here's the thing. See, YouTube even says, you are not entitled to a payment. We are not obligated to pay you. That's from YouTube, your employer. If you provide entertainment, sure, you should expect some sort of payment. You say you aren't going to put in the time to do videos for nothing. Well, you should be getting AdSense, right? And it's probably not what it was before. But then again, you can't leave YouTube for a year and come back and uh, be think everything's going to happen like you never left. Fuck, you can't even get second leave for two weeks. YouTube will just push you to the bottom of the pile. And as far as compensation for your work, well, like any other job, if you don't like the conditions or the pay, get another fucking job. 
You don't have to agree with me. That's never the point here. This is Blind Views, and that's the way I see it. What we do here is go back, 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 back.